So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to look at some sigma notation examples. So sigma notation is for when we need to write a sum of a bunch of things. So for example, if we want to write 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared plus 6 squared. And you can imagine this going even farther out and up to 20 or 30 or something like that. We want a nice compact way of writing this. And for this, we use sigma notation, sigma for sum. And so we'll write sigma, and then under the sigma, i equals 1 to 6 of i squared. Okay, so what this means, this sigma part here means that we increment i by 1 from 1 to 6. And we add up all the results. Right? So we start at i equals 1 and we get 1 squared. That's this. Then we add i equals 2 and we get 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. All right, i equals 5 gives us 5 squared. All the way up to 6 where we plug in 6 for i and we get 6 squared. So let's look at another example. Let's say sigma and i equals 4 to 7. And usually we'll say the sum i equals 4 to 7, right? We won't say sigma. i cubed. So what is this? Well, we'll start with 4, and we get 4 cubed, then 5 cubed, and we'll add that to the 4 cubed, plus 6 cubed, plus 7 cubed. So this just like here, means increment i by 1. Right, we're always incrementing it by 1. And now we're starting at 4, and we're going to 7. Okay, let's look at another example. Suppose we have square root of 2 plus square root of 4 plus square root of 6 plus square root of 8. What do we do? Well, we no longer have something like 1, 2, 3, 4, or 4, 5, 6, 7, because these numbers aren't increasing by 1. And this summation symbol always indicates incrementing by 1. So how can we write this? Well, let's say i from 1 to something. We can't just put i in here because the first thing we want is a 2. But notice the next thing is 2 more than 2, and the next thing is 2 more than 4, and then the next thing is 2 more than 6. So we're incrementing by 2, and to get an increment by 2, we'll just multiply i by 2. Right, so 2i gives us 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on. And so we'll throw a square root there, and we're going up to 8, so we want the top to be 4. Right, so i equals 1 term gives us the 2, i equals 2 gives us 4, 3 gives us 2 times 3, which is 6, 4 gives us 2 times 4, which is 8. And you can do this, you can use this notation for things that don't look very pretty, so we can have something like sine of 9 plus sine of 10 plus sine of 11 plus sine of 12. This is the sum from i equals 9 to 12 of sine of i. Right. Now, what if we have something like this? So if all we have is a 1 and I'm going to change this variable from i to k. There's nothing sacred about i. We use it often. It's a good index letter. But we can also use k or j or any other number that happens to be handy. But what if we have something like this, where this expression in the summation doesn't have this variable in it? Well, the general idea behind this is this part indicates 
that we write the expression here five times. And every time we see a K, we'll replace it with the corresponding number, one, two, three, four, five. But there's no K, so there's nothing to replace. So this is simply the sum of five copies of one. So this is five. So don't be worried if you see something like this that doesn't have a K in it or an I in it or whatever this, var whatever this variable is. Now there's some nice intuitive rules for manipulating sums like this and it's and it's nice because they're even better than than the similar limit rules uh, because we don't have anything infinite going on. So for example the sum from i equals 1 to n of k times a sub i, where k is a constant and a sub i is some expression possibly involving i. Well, we can factor this constant out front. So this is equal to k times the sum from i equals 1 to n of a sub i. And similarly, if we have the sum from i equals 1 to n of a sub i plus b sub i, well then we can split this up into two summations. This is the same as the sum from i equals 1 to n of a sub i plus the sum from i equals 1 to n of b sub i. So as a simple example, if we have the sum from i equals 1 to 5 of 7i, this is 7 times the sum from i equals 1 to 5 of i. And this is 7 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. This thing in parentheses here is equal to 15, since 7 times uh, 15 is 105.